Hello guys, my name is Wonjin and I'm going to talk about serverless ap application today. Um, so for this tech talk, I made a note app where you can unload notes and files um, using a lot of Amazon Web Services like Lambda, API Gateway, DynamoDB, and Cognito and S3. And um, I follow this tutorial and I give all my credits of my presentation to this amazing serverless stack tutorial. Um, I learned so much from this tutorial so I think you, should got, you, sh you guys should also check it out. And um, thank you JR also. Um, so this is how it looks. Uh, when you go to the front page, there's a login and sign up. When you go to the sign up, uh, you'll get a confirmation code in, through your email and you can actually sign up with that confirmation code. Um, his, this is when you log in to uh, the web uh, note app. So you'll see the list of your notes here. And when you click one note, you can edit and also create a new note. And there will be an attachment. You can also attach a file through your note app. So my first question to you guys would be, what do you see from this weird looking graph in terms of request and response? Um, let me give you hints from my favorite TV show, Silicon Valley. Guys, who's Manny Pacquiao? Pacquiao, he's one of the most famous people on the planet Earth. Oh, Manny Pacquiao, the Filipino legislator. No, boxer. Okay, well he just tweeted a link to our live stream and he has almost two million followers. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. We gotta scale up if we're gonna handle the cow traffic. I'm gonna go for the manifest. I'll kill the high split rate to get us more headroom. I'm gonna have to urinate into my water bottle. Ah, this guy's gonna drink his own piss? That's too good. We're gonna fail by succeeding. Jer, I need you to plug those servers in now. Hi, Captain. And the answer was um, overloaded requests, overload on servers, and consistent traffic where you can actually fail by succeeding. Um, this happens a lot in the IT world when everything starts to get immensely popular. Uh, on top of my mind, for example, when uh, Bitcoin prices soar, there will be a lot of bid and ask requests to exchange market server. But not only for these kinds of uh, obvious reasons, sometimes this can happen out of nowhere for no clear reasons at all. So what I'm trying to say here is you'll never know your app will experience this um, kind of rocket requests. And this can happen to me, this can happen to, this can happen to you and everybody in this room. Um, but does this always mean a good thing to developers? The fact is, when this happens, there is a high chance that you will lose more money because due, due to the server fees. Now let's say that the red box, red box is how much you have to provide servers to deal with those two high requests, with auto-scaling services, of course. But even with auto-scaling features on the cloud server, see how much you are wasting when this happens. Um, what we really want is a graph something like this that covers only the needed amount. We only want to pay for the compute that we really need. And this is what serverless architecture can do. It can automatically scale up and down, handling requests with no failure and optimize, with optimized costs. Um, so this one graph can summarize what serverless is all about. According to bustle.com, which has 50 million users, announced that it saved 84% of costs by moving to a serverless architecture. This is really amazing. I mean, we're living in a world where developers can be actually the best businessmen in the world. Um, so, what is serverless? I couldn't find a better definition of serverless than this one. Auto scaling in Heroku and AWS cannot start instances in 20 milliseconds and run for a half a second. Uh, whereas that's how serverless is implemented in AWS. We call it a function as a service here because we only deploy functions now and only the one container executes one, one function at a time. Um, containers are different from servers in that they're not OS level computational processes. Serverless architecture doesn't use any OS level deployment. Um, so when there's a request, the cloud provider creates a container 
and runs our function in it, and then just um, closes that container. If there are two concurrent requests, then two separate containers are created to respond to the request. And all these functions that we, the containers run for us are called Lambda functions in Amazon Web Service. Uh, so our serverless backend is simply a collection of lambdas. Let's, let's see how it works. So we, we only deploy individual Lambda functions. We don't handle requests the cloud providers like Amazon will do for us. They give this request as event objects to us in Lambda functions. And we only write functions that respond to these events. Um, so if you guys are interested in serverless architecture, I didn't want to go deep in this topic because there were already good, great, uh, already great videos in full, full stack tech talks uh, by these two presenters, Justin and Mauro, um, where they explained much about their cons and pros. Um, I wanted to look more into the codes, how serverless architecture is written. So let's talk about code now. So I use S3. So this is the architecture I use for the Note app. I use S3, which is a data storage. storage and this is where I store all of my um, front end app, which is all React components. I also save files attached to a Note to S3. Uh, for authentication, I use Amazon Cognito, Cognito user pool for signups and logins. But since everything is on the cloud and I need to access those clouds, I have to use Cognito to sign all my requests to access S3, the DynamoDB, and um, the I and the, um, DynamoDB is where I save all the text of nodes. Then API Gateway receives a request it looks the routing configuration and matches the request and call the right AWS, AWS Lambda functions. So we would have two folders for serverless architecture, one for backend and one for frontend. Backend would look like this. We use serverless as our boilerplate, so we install npm install serverless here. We have serverless webpack installed to use ES6 and 7 in our Lambda functions because they don't support uh, ES6 and 7 in default. We, then we would have uh, Lambda functions like create.js, uh, delete.js, get and list and update files. Also, we have serverless YML file, which is configuration file, so that we can tell um, AWS Gateway to call which Lambda functions to different requests. For front end, I use React Created App as boilerplate, so I installed npm create React App and use that command to create this um, project. So we now have all these React components and images and CSS files here. Uh, we'll build these files by calling npm run React scripts build and then save all this into AWS S3 data storage. So that's different, right? So back end, we deploy to AWS A API Gateway. And for the front end, we save those files into S3 uh, data storage. Since this was a tech talk, I wanted to share some coding tips I learned from making this Note app. Um, so this is serverless YML file. And this is, part, this is the part where I register functions to AWS um, API Gateway. So we have create file, and so here we have create file, right? And then um, inside that, we call the main function inside the create file when we get this HTTP request. Um, what you really need to be careful with this serverless YML file is indentations. I spent um, all days, sorry about that. I spent all day um, figuring out why I couldn't get authorization to access S3 and started the tutorial all over like several times before I realized that I got the indentation wrong. So always look up for indentation in this file. Also, another tip is that you don't have to wrap everything with one HTML tag to render in JSX. One big parent tag wrapping all children um, inside can be bugging sometimes because uh, it can mess up your styles. 
SSS. But what you can do is to make children into lists and give explicit key like one, two, like this. Uh, so here's a lambda function that creates a node. We get event that which wraps the request object. So we get all request data from event object and first save them to DynamoDB. Uh, like this. So after saving to DynamoDB, we call the callback function that gets error and data as its arguments. Inside, we can see two different code that makes response objects for different situations. After constructing your response, you call the callback function that Lambda gave us um, with, with, with response. So let's make this code more modular and clean by making it dry, don't repeat yourself, and using async and await. So everything now can be put in one page. First, uh, we know that we're going to construct many responses, not only in create file, but also in update, delete, and get file. So we make a utility file for that. Some same things goes with DynamoDB call. We give action now to DynamoDB function, which wraps around the DynamoDB functions. Also, replaced, we replaced all callbacks with async and await uh, syntax. But what are these syntax do? So this is a syntax that replaces then and catch syntax when you write code that deals with promises. This was from my stackathon where I used authentication from uh, in Lundot. Uh, I needed to get tokens and then call multiple times with this data I got from APIs. Writing something like this with then catch function uh, syntax would make this look uh, ugly, but what, with this new syntax with async and uh, await, it looks like you're working with synchronous functions. So I love async and await syntax in Node.js 7, and I hope you guys also check this out. One last thing I want to share is code splitting. So we imported all React components when you go into the main page, and this is how we usually do it in the route file. But since we're importing all React components, even before we really want to render them, this delays the initial load time a lot. What we can do here is utilize async, asynchronous features and write something like this. So here we wrap all import calls with async component. And what it, this does is that when, we, when React Router wants to render React Component according to some path, we dynamically import them at that time. And this will save a lot of initial loading time. So this is how you, this is what, when this is the code that you will see when you build this uh, async import functions. Uh, all these chunk files are created when we build the previous code split file. Uh, and when deployment, the browser will load up the different chunks on demand so that it reduces initial loading time efficiently. So that was the end of my talk talk, but there were so many things I learned uh, following these tutorials. Um, and I could only speak about like several of them, so you should like also go to the tutorial and uh, follow the tutorial if you guys are interested in serverless stack using AWS. Thank you.